Hi, this is Chuck King. Today on The King's Guide, we're at the Patsy Clark Mansion, visiting with John Richards and Jim Brickell, authors of two new biographies on giants of Spokane history, Patsy Clark and E.J. Brickell. So I'm John Richards, and I'm one of the great-grandsons of Patsy and Mary Clark. I'm Jim Brickell, and I'm one of the great-great-grandsons of E.J. Brickell. In a fun twist of fate, Jim and John are distantly related. Josiah was your what? Well, we, well, we know it's J.P.M.'s son. J.P.M.'s son. son. Right, right. Yeah. J.P.M., which was my great-grandfather's brother. Great-grandfather's brother. Well, his son, Josiah, married my grandfather's uh, cousin, and she was Lucille Dewar. The two authors are very distant cousins by marriage. Really just I don't know why. Yeah, not even blood. <laughs> John Richards' book is about the life and times of his great-grandfather, Patsy Clark. People recognize the name Patsy Clark because for 20 years it was a beloved restaurant. But most people don't know who Patsy Clark was. And in my experience, over half the people think that Patsy's a woman, perhaps Patricia Clark. In Ireland, typically, someone named Patrick, their nickname is Patty. I don't know why it comes out as Patsy, but I believe it was because he was so approachable. His family and all his friends and all his mining associates always called him Patsy. And I think his warm-hearted personality was such that it made everybody feel comfortable. Patsy Clark was born in Ireland near the end of the Great Famine or Potato Blight, which killed an estimated one million people. From this great tragedy, Patsy Clark set off on an adventure that would make him one of the most well-known mining men of the 19th century. But that's a long time ago. Patsy's been dead well over 100 years. So most of us in Spokane and surrounding just know the restaurant. The goal of my book is to tell you more about the person. Jim Brickell's book is about a forgotten Spokane founder, his great-great-grandfather, E.J. Brickell, the lion in the shadows. He was a fellow that that didn't seek the limelight. And uh, at the time, there was no way to avoid it. Everybody knew who he was when he was alive. But, but he, he sort of faded from the picture and he didn't leave a house behind. And that makes a lot of difference. Who would know about Campbell if he hadn't left the house, you know? Back in the 1880s, E.J. Brickell was the wealthiest man in town and president of some 14 organizations, most of which were essential to the building of Spokane as a city. Although it was strongly proposed at the time of his death, his name today is not attached to any street, park, building, or other public feature of the city to which he contributed so much. It is found only on a cemetery monument sufficiently imposing that the few passers-by will wonder who the fellow could have been to have put up such a chunk of stone. But on the day of his funeral, a procession of over 64 carriages stretched over a mile long and ended up at the cemetery that E.J. Burkell himself had helped to build and develop. And it's been the habit of some writers for a long time, apparently, to, uh, to say, well, uh, the Spokane uh, Falls uh, Lumber and Manufacturing Company was uh, at Cannon and others. Yeah, it was. It was Cannon and others. But the president of the company was E.J. Brooklyn. E.J. Burkell was not a man for the spotlight and often stayed away from black tie society functions. And he was just a and just a, a logger from the Sierras, basically. Both men, Patsy Clark and E.J. Burkell, started life with nothing, and both made brave and difficult trips across America to finally get to Spokane. Once Patsy Clark and E.J. Burkell arrived out west, they began to make a name for themselves in mining and timber. Patsy was fortunate that in Utah he meets a man named Marcus Daly, who went on to become one of the great copper kings of Butte, Montana, and he liked the job that Patsy did for him. So Patsy was able to work up to ultimately being the superintendent of Anaconda Mine, the largest copper mine in the world. Through that experience, he was able then to travel to Carly Mining District and Roslyn, British Columbia and Public Washington and other places, and eventually became one of the best known mining men of the 19th century. Before he arrived in Spokane, E.J. Burkell made big money in Truckee, California, 
when he started the Truckee Lumber Company. That fortune helped E.J. become a major force in the development of Spokane. He seemed to, to go out of his way to, to help other people in business. He, he had enough money, for example, that he could have started the Traders National Bank by himself, or if not by himself, with his partner in California. But he didn't do that. He had stockholders, about a dozen of them, uh, people in early Spokane Falls, and uh, so they had a stake in it, and if the bank made any money, they made some money. And, and when they made it, they spent it in the local community. Now, if he had been the sole stockholder, he would have made all that money, but he wouldn't have spent it all here. The family only uses so much, you know. So it, it, it did more for the community, and he, he had a really strong interest in, in developing Spokane Falls. And he, like a lot of others, they wanted to make it as big as Kansas City, the biggest Chicago growth, you know, this was their mantra. But, but in that, he, he always involved other people, even when it wasn't necessary. Both men were eager to help develop Spokane and the surrounding community, and they were generous to people who were down on their luck. So it wasn't just a mine he developed. Invariably, he would add technologies that were state-of-the-art, and he would make a difference in the community, whether that would be political or involvement in his church. Uh, it could be bringing utilities, the uh, first light that came to uh, Roslyn were as a result of Patsy's effort. Um, he associated himself with people that could help him improve the community. Uh, in Republic Washington, he started a boarding house, a place for his miners. He could play the fiddle and the accordion, so after the dishes were done and the meal was done, they could have a dance there. But he and his wife gave back to the community. Uh, specifically, Our Lady of Lourdes Cathedral was benefited by their donations and Sigurdar Hospital. Jim and John wrote these wonderful books about their grandfathers so that readers could take on more than just a here and now view of things. We see the world in three dimensions, uh, length, width, height. That's, that's what we see, but they say that time is the fourth dimension. And if we could see, if we could see the world in, the, in four dimensions, more or less, you know, See, if we, could, if we could see what that park over there was like before anybody but Indians had ever been here. I think it, it, it's, uh, it gives a person more than just a, a here and now view of things. And I suppose some people are more inclined to want to do that than others, but, but I've always been one that did. Read more about both E.J. Burkell and Patsy Clark in new books written by their great-grandsons. Both books are over 300 pages and include rare family photographs. The Lion in the Shadows and The Life and Times of Patsy Clark are both available online at www.nostalgiamagazine.net. I'm Chuck King. See you next time on The King's Guide. If you like today's goodies on Spokane history, make sure you subscribe to Nostalgia Magazine. You'll find more goodies in every issue. Ageless stories, ageless photos. That's Nostalgia Magazine. So supposedly, now I've never been up to check this, but in the books it says that each one of these monks' faces has a different visit. And the wood is supposedly gopher wood. Gopher wood is stated in the Bible once. And supposedly it's wood that, that hey, you know what's... Well, uh, frankly, I'm a forester, but I have no idea what gopher wood is. <laughs> Well, don't you read the Bible every day? Like that? <laughs> I've, read, I've read the Bible, I've read that Gopher Wood and the Ark, but. Uh, okay. Well, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> what I do know is in that country they don't grow trees that are with the LV. <laughs>